have a suction cup on the corner. We're going to lay our slab. Okay. And, uh, we've got our strip. So what we need to do is to ensure before we start tapping this down, which I've just done, is to make sure that the mortar under the slab is well pushed in on the edges. There we are. And we know we're going to get good compaction. And you can actually see there on this bit that the water there is only approximately no more than 50 mil thick, which is okay. We could go a little bit less. There you are. That's worked in. And we've got to do the same on this side. Right, now we've got the, the mortar under the slab. We put our level on and we can see what we need to do. That's near enough level there. When we're tapping, though it needs to go down on this side, I'm not just going to tap on this edge. I'm going to go past the halfway line and probably about three quarters, two thirds to actually get it down. If I tap down on this edge, okay, though it's got to go down on this edge, it's going to come up on that side there. So we don't go down all the way. Pull the level just off centre and then we can go on the two thirds part. So we're more or less centre there. So if we do this, Level. See where the bubble is. Now you can see that I'm hitting that with some force, and that will tell you that we know that we've got good compressive strength. It's compacted underneath. If we look at that side now, it's just coming down a little bit, but just a little bit high on this side. So we can go back over to this side now, okay? And we can just push some of that underneath there. Remember, we pushed that in with the slab before. There we are coming up nicely. In fact, we can just turn it around like we've always used to do. Make sure our mortar is in. There we are. That's looking good. Do I use soft leveling systems? No, because I feel that the soft leveling systems, when you wind them down, it'll just pull the slab up off the surface. This has got full contact under the slab everywhere. Full contact. There we are. That is level. Gonna clean the slurry off now, but that's looking good. I promise you, I will take this slurry off at some point. It's absolutely fine at the moment, but what I wanna try and do is achieve the gap we're having. There you are, look, that's four mil. Achieve the perfect. <laughs> that was just the gas in there. We've got a four mil spacer on here. And as I said, I don't like using those South Leveling systems. So I'll just tap that down. We know, okay. And what we've done, we've laid the slab tight. And the idea about that, if we lay it tight initially, okay, and then we put the spacer in, it pulls the slab away. But remember, the slab is stuck to initially to the, the slurry, is stuck to the mortar bed underneath. So when it's tight, what will happen is that it will tend to want to pull back in. Unlike when you're laying with a wet mortar bed, is that you actually, um, the mortar's jellyfied and it just tends to wobble and move around. It's not stable enough to actually get it in the right position. So if we look at that now, we can tap that. There we are. And a four mil gap now, it allows us to get a decent amount of grout down in that joint. The reason for the grout, the grout is a way of bridging the two tiles together, okay? And to avoid any cracking. In these lots of these, lots of these new cementitious grouts now, they have polymers, which means basically many parts. So there's a bit of flexibility in the joints. So Nick has just mixed that up. Um, and look at that. That is almost a perfect mix. Look at that. A lot better than the first mix because the mix we had on, uh, on the floor was a little bit, there was hard lumps in it. But look at that. Look, look. Absolutely perfect. Look, that, that's really good. That's really... Can you imagine, Nick, for one moment? Just, you can just film here. Can you imagine if you've got the same quantities with that with a wet mix you can squeeze it together in, in the drop. same volume but what happens when the, the, the water evaporates it you're left crumble. You're, yeah it'll crumble absolutely that's the thing you've got to try and realize this is the way that we always did it this is probably the way that the romans did it did you know that i don't think that's meant did you know any romans no do you oh, oh. 
So with these slabs, we have got a bevel on there, so they are crowning in places, and I don't know how consistent that is, but the most important thing what we've got to do is when we put the level on, we've got to take an average from across the slab as opposed to on the edge, if, if that's an exaggeration, because they do bevel off in areas. Probably one of the most important things that a lot of contractors don't do is that when we look at our level now and we're looking at our line, we presume that it's down on the line and this is where things start running out. What we need to do, we need to literally get down and have a look and see where it is. Now, little tap on there, you can see it's absolutely solid. Now, that's about a mil off at the moment, a mil, okay? Let's have a look again. Now, we're just about touching. So that suits us. That's probably about half a mil to a mil, okay? You're gonna say, how can you tell where there's half mil underneath there? Well, the fact is I can't, I'm just saying that. It's probably within a mil. So we know that the level of fall is going from A to B oak, just behind me. And we know that that patch oak is following that line and that line is correct. It's got the perfect suggested for what we wanted on this patch oak, which is a turn of a bubble. We've got our slurry station here. We're gonna to have to move back now because we are coming down. We've been talking to our, our customer this morning, so we're not going at uh, high speed. Uh, as I said, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. So what I'm doing now, if you look at that now, I'm just walking over that now, which I can do. And what we used to do in the past, we used to get large areas done if we're using a paving set and you could just use a comp compactor plate to, to get the compression and then start screeding off just like doing a screeded floor. This may seem obvious to some people, but for some it doesn't. So if this helps, it helps. So that's pretty com well compacted now. There's nothing better than underfoot to get uh, compaction over that uh, area. Now we can start putting our mortar in and building up to the correct height that we need. And remember what I actually done before. Let's just pull some of that around now. What I did before was I actually used the level on here to make sure that it was running level at least to see where we are and screen it off just like this. And that's what I did. And that helps. Look how quick that was done. Then using a trowel in some cases. Again, it may appear easy for some, but not for everyone. So just put a little bit more on there now. Pulling away from here. There we go. So our bed, pull that in. 
Look, look how dry it is in comparison to some wet mixes that you see going on. The trouble is with the wet mixes, as I've said so many times, is you'll have mineral deposits coming from there after because it's been made up with water as opposed to a good compressive product like what we're using now. It's not, so when we think about this drying out, there's not a lot of water in it initially. And we, we probably look at, I don't know, to try and quantify the, the amount that you actually lose. But what happens is that your mortar becomes just too biscuit-like, and that's when you get that migration coming through. So when I was talking about crowning earlier on, if you look at that now, see the wobble? That's not any anything underneath the level, that's the slab. So these slabs, the feature of it, the texture of it, is their crown in the middle here, and they're crowning that there as well. So it will bevel off, and we're talking about a mil, a mil and a half in places.
So what we've got here now, I've got this six foot level so we can hit that diagonal line across there. So if you jump over and try and get the camera down, Kyle, for our viewers to actually have a look right underneath here. If you can do it, that'd be great. If you can bend down like that, that'd be absolutely fine. Get right underneath, go closer, go closer. You can actually see how that level is touching that line there. Perfect. Good shot. What Nick was actually doing there, he was forcing the mortar in underneath. Um, Nick, yes. it's probably a little bit shy. No, in, in depth. It's about two and a half inches, really. You want to use you want to be going at two inches really, like the there you are. That's perfect. That's in place. Okay, nice. Make sure they tap well in on your, your spaces. Right, so what we're gonna do now, Nick's gonna give this a brush off, okay? And then we're gonna get some clean water and a sponge, and we're gonna make sure that all the tops of the pavement is nice and clean. So there we are, we showed you the basic process of how we are laying this porcelain paving today in Newport Gwent, South Wales. So now we've got to do some work. I'm saying with a semi-dry semi -dry mix, right? And remember, then if it did go cold, you work to about one o'clock, half one, then you don't work after that. You don't mix anything like one o'clock, that's it. Yeah. Then cover it, it up and cool. then you're fine. Yeah, but there's nothing to freeze, is there? No, but if there was a freeze, would you cover it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah but you still cover it anyway. Yeah. You still cover it anyway in the winter. Like, you know, it now it's all right, because there's nothing out, we're not experiencing those cold Probably. conditions. Yeah. But you've got to remember is that by about one o'clock, two o'clock with this, we'll, yeah, we'll be doing some other stuff. We won't be getting on with it. We'll, we'll make that point, but look how good it is. And you know, there's nothing to freeze, is there? No. There's just enough to set it off. Yeah. So because the mold is always curing all the time, yeah. it's drawing the moisture from the ground to cure it. getting our mixes in we're getting our mixes in quite fast because it's a screen mix and look how thorough look how consistent and look how good it looks with what nick how mix uh, done it it's, it's absolutely perfect so we're getting this in now get a bit of compaction underfoot now start the process and uh we're going to get a little bit more maybe just past halfway and then we're going to start laying we've got a slab ready slurry ready to go but we need to get another couple of hours
completed this area now we've laid 24 760 by 760 which equates to 13 something square meters didn't it yeah around that anyway and uh, and we've used probably a ton 1.3 1.25 ton and a quarter of sharp sand and uh, so it was usually about a ton of sand to 10 square meters if you're laying correct so we're not far off it's about right anyway so we've laid these this area now in place and what it leaves then tomorrow is to do the cut up here and a cut across the house and then we'll be able to once we've got that in we'll be able to service for the picture frame as well and we've got a little bit of work to do with the drains on that side but all in all it's good but the next stage now is to correct the sub base level on this side we're going to get the laser level out and we're going to get stone in and get to the right height so we don't use too much sand and cement. 